I want to ask you about the images of Palestinian men stripped with their hands uh, tied behind their backs and kneeling on the ground. Uh, BBC staff have geolocated the, the video footage to a place called Bet Lahia. Palestinian diplomats say these are savage images invoking humanity's darkest times. The Israeli army say only that suspects were being interrogated. When you saw that footage, what did you think? But it reminded me a little bit of Abu Ghraib, uh, and I think it's tremendously unhelpful to the Israelis, tremendously unhelpful to the United States. I mean, there's a difference between the type of actions you might take on the ground to protect against, uh, uh, you know, militants and to, to detain and interrogate those who, who need to be captured. But to, um, to release images like that, I think it just sends a message to the world, to the region, that Israel is, is degrading and humiliating Palestinians. And I think that uh, I would be surprised if the IDF doesn't take some actions to make sure those kind of photographs don't come out again. After this is over, whether it be the end of this month, the end of January, February, whenever, what will be acceptable, do you think, Mr Lowenstein, to the US in terms of the rebuilding of Gaza and the running of Gaza in the future? Well, I think all these conversations about the day after assume that there's going to be an, an end of the military operation and then a new era of, of reconstruction will begin. My sense is that Israel will not have achieved the objective of, of destroying Hamas's military capabilities any time in the next few months, and, and that after that phase of the operation is over, they'll go to a different phase where, where there's less intense combat, but nonetheless, there's still a threat from Hamas. So I think the days in which you can talk about post-occupation uh, uh, governance in Gaza, when you can talk about reconstruction, are, are, are quite a ways off in the future. And I really think it, the idea that we're going to do it you know, negotiations around a two-state solution at the end of this process. I just don't think that's where the Israelis are going to be at the end of this. I think the situation on the ground from a humanitarian perspective is going to make it very difficult for the Saudis and other Arab countries to entertain uh, those kind of discussions with the Israelis. So I, I think we would like to see the Palestinian Authority come into, the, into Gaza when this war is over. That's going to take a very long time to put the PA in a position where it's actually able to take on any meaningful responsibilities in Gaza. So I think we're, we're looking at a year or two years before those issues become really relevant in terms of U.S. policy. OK. And how many, how many more Palestinian civilians will be dead by then? I mean, when you were on the programme on the 9th of October, you talked about potentially up to, in your view, 10,000 to 20,000 Gazans might die in this conflict. And we're nearly at that now. Yeah, and, and I think that since the Israelis resumed military operations one week ago, there's been about 3,000 uh, uh, casualties on the ground there. So the, 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 the rate of civilian casualties really hasn't changed. And if that continues on for the next six to eight weeks, which is what the Israelis are talking about, you know, you, you're really you're talking about 30,000, you know, Palestinian civilians killed. And, and that's just really not sustainable uh, for the Israelis. It's not sustainable at all for the United States. 